the mid towers. He's gonna roll into him now, but a bit too late to get the kill. I'm sure Soxo's just happy to be able to get a lot of damage in. Saberlight finally gets caught wow. back over. Okay. Wow, he really did kill him. I was a bit surprised he was able to pull out that kind of damage, but it did cost him his life as he had to dive deep underneath the tier one tower. From Era, just cutting the wave, not having to deal with the Tidehunter, but yeah. you know, obviously in a little bit of trouble now. Ooh, nice little juke there. They don't have the best cores to be able to sit in lane against the Tide, right? No, so, they don't. Era, he'll probably go down here. There's no way he can juke it out one more time, right? Don't think so. Thompson got a lot of heroes surrounding him right now in that mid lane, but uh, that's the beautiful thing about Tidehunter. He can usually ignore quite a bit of it. Nisha does end up going down thanks to uh, the help of No Tail with those heavy nukes. Much magic damage out there, and you're such a frail creature to just raw nukes. It's true. You need a couple of bracers, at the, at the very least a rain drop to deal with it. Looks like Saberlight used his supernova just uh, just recently. Saberlight goes oh. back into Thompson here and takes a big swing for the anchor smash and dies to the gush follow-up. They do manage to get the kill on the supports here, but it's costing them quite a bit. They really need the secondary kill on Soxa, but Supreme can't block it in. He's going to have to pursue underneath the tier. One gets the kill. This is the downside of Tidehunter. As these mobile heroes just kind of chase around him, he can't really help out too much. And now he's going to be surrounded by everybody. Does manage to get off an anchor smash, and that'll help keep him alive, especially with relocate of Midwan coming in. Trying to slow down Era. A gush slows him down even further. He still has a Fissure, though. He's going to bait him in a bit to the Tier 1 tower. Double chains from Supreme will keep them at bay. If they can kill this Catapult, though, I think they're perfectly fine here without the DD. Nice block in there on No Tail, and it looks like OG Almost got, got it off. A little bit too far for themselves. That's in part because they were fighting a bottom lane where Saberlight did die to mid one. Although, you know, I would argue that the mid lane, at least stopping that pressure, like killing that catapult is, is really important because sure. this, this is a big spike for Tidehunter. I, I think, uh, okay, Supreme. Thompson? They're going to try a little bit. The chains instantly dispelled by the maxed out he Kraken shell here. Now, he is going to be able to get the Fisher block in, but the Ravage is up, as you said. He chooses an Anchor Smash instead. The Surge allows him to get away. That'll help solve some of the mobility problems for a tight hunter. Soxa, though, his mobility is canceled by Charlie. Now the Ravage going up, but he outruns the Tentacles, and the Necronomicons will eventually kill him. And Thompson, having killed that melee Necronomicon, actually just gets bursted down. As since they didn't, and he was given to an Ember Spirit, this is going to be significantly more difficult. And that's why OG, they're not going to let Ninjas the Pajamas just walk into the pit. They're going to try and take the fight straight to Nip. They're going to be able to catch Misha to, to start this fight. But it's just supports for now. Sableite, he'd be a big kill, but he doesn't even get to pop the Supernova in time. Supreme jumps away to his remnants, but OG just keeps on trucking. The extra movement speed on Thompson. Whether it's from the Tether or the Surge is allowing him to always kind of keep a threat on this Ember. Oh, you remove the move speed cap. Like, mm -hmm. this is this is some new technology here. Yeah, pretty much you, you're theory crafting, like, what can you do with a carry Tidehunter? And it's like the biggest downside is mobility, right? Being able to stick on top of heroes. He just Look charges right in. And this <laughs> is what? Are you serious? Face is just gone, just like that. A Fisher wall that kind of goes wrong for Ninja the Pajamas. They do manage to get off the Supernova as well as the Echo Slam. It looks like the Supernova is going to die, as will Era. Supreme is just left to try and pump out the rest of the damage by himself because he doesn't have a Lycan here with Shapeshift. He gets pulled back from the vacuum into No Tail's uh, Fortune's End. Maybe could have gotten something. Solar Crest now complete for the Tide Hunter, so he's got uh, all the minus armor items he needs. Mid one. Relocate, he's going to relocate in. in. They're actually going to pop the shape shift here. They have to go for the backline heroes. That's why No Tail's going to be the first target. He's already dead. Mid one is actually in a bit of trouble here. Three seconds till he relocates back, so they're going to norm for now and go for the support. Soxa, what a vacuum pull in from Seb. Looks really hot, but can they actually chase down the rest of these important heroes? Because even Misha, the squishy five position, is getting away. The heal actually brings him back up to near full and tops in. Still on that front line, still ready to fight, but Ninja the Pajamas, they see that Thompson's perhaps low enough. They actually get the Yule Scepter on the Surge, so Thompson, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be stuck inside the Supernova. Sure, he keeps on dispelling off these stuns, but the damage, it's coming a little bit more from Saberlight, and he could have gotten it. And Supreme is there to be able to get it with a slight chain combo that finishes off the Tidehunter and allows them to get away from the myriad of illusions that are left on the field from good old Darkseer.
So no tell. He can play forward like he was doing before because the Ravage is there to assist. Era, you can see half his health is gone from one anchor smash. If he gets another one, Era's just going to die, and he's get caught up by the rest of OG. So does Misha. Once again, the two supports of Ninjas of Pajamas, they do die, uh, but this is still OG kind of five manning and taking over the map. I love that they can die basically doing this one time before, and they continue being so aggressive. Like, I think they have to keep the aggression up here. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Because eventually the Ember Spear gets a bit too big and starts killing a lot of your backline heroes, right? And this is where the Lycan coming into play goes into the back, tries to go for No-Tail. They actually tried to hit the Meteor Hammer combo with the Supernova, but it wasn't good enough. And the Ravage actually clips Supreme. He didn't dodge it with a slight or a jump to his uh, Remnant or anything. So that was just an easy kill for Tidehunter to be able to grab. And they didn't have buyback. So now OG with their aggression. Almost. Now can they actually finish off this melee Rax? It looks like OG feels like it's not worth a try while Ravage is on cooldown. Yeah, now it's really But if somebody terrible. treads a little bit too far forward, like perhaps Supreme and the rest of his what? team does, Thompson just rolls up once again, makes Enchantress the target again and again. Supreme using the slide to try and get out. What an Echo Slam from Era as he jumps in, but everybody heals up. The mech comes out, the heals from the Oracle, and it looks like everybody is perfectly fine except for maybe No-Tail, who's still kind of being run down by the Necronomicon units. He does eventually die, but doesn't really matter. You won the fight, and you're still ready to go for these melee barracks. Charlie's on a mega kill streak, and they're losing. <laughs> like yeah. this, this is so sad. I mean, that, that's just the, the Lycan versus Tidehunter matchup, though. He can't do anything other than kill the Oracle in these fights. Yeah. He can try and go in and go for the squishiest hero. And obviously against Lycan and Ember, this chip damage, that's very important with a Tidehunter. He becomes basically unkillable. Yeah, you take a large percentage of the damage away, and then you take just straight up raw damage out. Thompson, though, he's really got to be careful of that Sunray. That's the only thing that really threatens him right now, is if he stays into the entirety of that, that percentage-based damage does do some good work. And what a rolling from Soxa, reading where the Remnant's going, and that's a vacuum follow-up as well with a Ravage. And is that just going to be the wipeout of this game? They do manage to take out the Supernova, and there's still some buybacks left in the tank for Ninjas the Pajamas. They're going to have to blow all of them, though, and they don't have their Echo Slam. They don't have their Supernova. I'm not sure what they have to be able to stop OG from retreating. And I'm not even sure if they can really stop them from just taking their base like this. Roll forward, Saber Light tries to dive away. Then he dies inside of the fountain too. Couldn't get out fast enough. The silence on Supreme. Look at the, uh, the move speed on these two heroes. Yeah, dude, they're just rolling Bro. up. Finally, Charlie, he's going to pop his ultimate. There goes the Echo Slam out from Arrow once again. They're trying to target to mid one, but the heals come out from No Tail. Every single time they try and target somebody else other than No Tail, they are met with a resounding wall of heals and magic immunity that pushes them back. They finally had to go for No Tail now, but then eventually they just run out of damage. The four man of OG remains strong even just outside of your fountain. Pull it back, oh, back out. out, pull out of the fountain, get back here. We want to have a fight a little bit longer before we finish up this bottom lane. <laughs> GG, man. Like, they are really using this Darks here to its fullest potential. Comes into play, the Grimstroke uh, Inkswell comboed with that. Seven Charlie having a bit of standoff right now as they're dropping each other's items and... Well, the swinging is going to start. Charlie hoping that he's going to work Seb back into what is a setup from Misha and Era as they pop out. It was a bait all along, and the sun strike, it's not needed. Misha will take the kill instead. Even though the invoker is top net worth, everybody else is looking real good on the opposing side. Top lane, nice rotation coming in from Era, and a good opportunity to kill both of the heroes in the off lane here. But Seb, with a nice stomp, this Sun Strike, it is going to land the Fire Spirits, though he had a stick charge. It's not enough, though. You see Ninja the Pajamas, the, their game plan is is definitely, they've, got, they've gotten two cores in the side lanes that can, at some point in time, feel okay being left alone. Though Charlie, he's not feeling so okay right now. He knows he's dead because mid one's relocating in. He was just hoping he'd get the kill on Seb, and Supreme clips him just perfectly enough that the IO didn't tank up the, uh, the Sun Strike damage with him. Meanwhile, they do manage to kill Notal while he was left alone. Guess he really thought he was uh, maybe going to be diving a bit. Soxa 
Well, he's immediately gone on by Charlie, but uh, multiple TPs coming in from OG. Fortunately, the Soulbind doesn't really latch to anybody else, and Charlie's just going to go straight up for a TP out. It's going to be a close call, but the magic damage is too much for him to handle. Meanwhile, Seb, he gets taken out on the other side of things. Saberlight, though, is going to roll out of his Rolling Thunder soon. They got more heroes closing in. The Invoker is rotated from that mid lane to try and sandwich onto Thompson here, who's still looking to be able to chase down Misha. Throws out and hiding away in the trees, trying to get away from this rocket barrage as best he can. Now Saberlight trying to help out here. Yes, the support is dead, but if Supreme can actually get this kill onto Thompson, it'd be well worth it. And with the help of the Phoenix Egg, it's looking like they should be able to get it. Thompson, he actually did a nice play there in turning around and trying to kill Saberlight, knowing he was dead anyway. Unfortunately, his damage just came a bit shy. No tail. Removing one of those fire spirits will stay alive. It's going to be tough for Ninjas and Pajamas at times to stick onto them. Supreme going to be caught here by Seb. The blink in stun with the ink swell. It is such a potent combo with these blink stunners. As you could see, they didn't even need the extra stun. If he had like a thousand more HE, he probably still would have died. Yeah, I, I think that's also just the utter most important hero to kill. Oh, oh, he was trying to go for the Rolling Thunder, but that was right as Zeb chose to jump in, make his initiation, make himself loud and proud in the mid lane, take that mid tier one tower. That is all important for OG. What do you really need on center? You don't You don't buy a BKB, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't buy a four staff. It, like really all you need is the blink. And silence on a Sabre Light. It may spell his doom here as Zeb comes in. Let's not get into NA Dota lore here. Misha in some trouble here as he's uh, stuck inside this neutral camp, but really he positioned himself quite nicely. Mid one will eventually get the kill, but he's in a nasty, sticky, unwinnable situation. He's surrounded by four heroes. Ninjas and pajamas, they finally get some real blood out there, and they're going to push forward for a little bit more. They've got the god strength still up. Like he just seems to think that this item is really good, on, especially on heroes, of course, that just need the levels. Yeah. Don't really need items. Okay, so they saw a bunch of heroes rotate up to top. They think maybe they could fight here, and then they kind of see Thompson in his full form, realize, wait a minute, that man's got a BKB. Retreat, but it's too late. Thompson, he's already closed that gap, and now Seb is here as well with the rest of the team. The Soulbind's going to go out, catching even more heroes, and now Ninjas the Pajamas, they're going to have to fight around the Supernova, but the Supernova, it'll be dealt with so quickly with that hand on Midas Centaur. Tornado comes through, clip and a couple of heroes, man, and that Death Ward with the Maledict that was already up on Thompson, doing quite a large amount of work there, but all it does is force them back. It doesn't actually get any important kills. They kill Soxa, but that's going to be it. Meanwhile, they've lost four and maybe a fifth is Supreme. Still has the dust on him. Does he have anything he can invoke here to be able to get out? Stuck in a hole, but no way to survive. That's a team wipe there, right? Yep. And then now he's got a BKB, so he's like, well, once they put any real disables on me, I can deal with that as well. The BKB is still on cooldown for now. He's going to get the Tornado EMP follow-up. The rest of his team, it's a little bit too far away. They're going to bounce back in, but they snatch the Soulbind onto the Invoker with the Panko, so they completely neutralize him, get the, the homing missile stun afterwards, and this is going to be a comeback here for the Invoker, but what can he do with the second life? He's going to pop his BKB, but that poor Sven, man, he just gets eaten alive by Thompson. A really nice ice wall, but Thompson zooms out of it pretty quickly, and now he's got his BKB up. Seb, he tried to put a, a, a halt to Supreme's retreat there. Look at him go, man. He's catching up to Era. Era thought, oh, please, the Icarus dive. Surely it's going to get me enough distance, but it won't. Thompson's a shark, and he'll hunt down these kills wherever he smells the blood to do so. If it comes all the way to the end of your fountain, he'll take it, and maybe even in the fountain of course he will. Thompson, calm down. What are you doing, you mad lad? Get out of there with the BKB TP. Once again, he'll be fine. They don't have any stops to these things. 0.27C fountain. Yeah, we're it's an Ursa about fountain, you know? It's got it them, the fury swipes. Uh, Misha kind of pops his head out. So, okay, the relocate's coming, and Saberlight says it's time to go. He does have the soul bind on him. He'll steer it away from the invoker to make sure he's not halted in place. And uh, OG, well, they're just controlling the map. We got a 14,000 net worth lead, and it's growing all the time because in the pajamas, they very rarely hold a whole lot of real estate. No tail. Drop in some sprays on the ground while dodging tornadoes. Misha, he's going to be able to get the paralyzing cask. It's not going to land for very long, and a missed initiation there from Seb. He's trying to blindly catch Charlie. Charlie pops his god strength. They're chasing after the Pango right now. Deafening Blast is going to push him away, but they still manage to finish off 
that team fighter. Look at the damage coming out from Thompson, man. Charlie, it just looks like he's being ignored. It's now the supernova is going to be dealt with by the gyrocopter. Charlie, it finally falls as he couldn't even kill mid one. Supreme looking to finish him off with the tornado, the ice wall, but no, the heals come in from no tail. That is an ultra kill for the Chad Sun, and they didn't kill anything. Look, they're all ending on mid one. This is just this is just sad at this point in time. This is this is cyberbullying. This is <laughs> give him the rampage. <laughs> Oh, those are some good teammates. Those are some great teammates. Well, shout out for Ninja the Bajan.